Good morning, people. Good morning. All right, let's get focused. We just started this YouTube channel and we need to figure out what to talk about next. Let's shoot for some popular topics and trending movies and shows. Let's hear some ideas. How about Spider-Man? That's good. That's good. Still going strong at the box office. What else? How about Book of Boba Fett? It's not finished yet, but I like how you're thinking. Anything else? Let's talk about Shang-Chi. Alan saw it last week, and he loved it. I did. <laughs> I think you're on to something, man. I think you're on to something. Hey, hey, Max, you've helped us with some great ideas before. What say you? Well, I think we should do something a little different. How about a retro review for the 2003 Ang Lee Hulk movie? Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. Out of all these movies I can review, why this one? Well, I'll tell you, but first, here's a history lesson. Critics did not care for this movie. It was panned by fans and absolutely bombed at the box office. A movie that I think has been forgotten and buried. Why am I reviewing the 2003 Hulk movie? Well, it's because I think this movie's reputation isn't deserved. It's deeper than your average comic book movie. And it was made before there was even a perfected comic book movie formula that we all have nowadays because of the MCU. It was less, you know... <laughs> It was a drama. It was a character study. It was meant for more sophisticated moviegoers. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not that pretentious. In all seriousness though, I think this movie's marketing set this movie up to fail. I mean, it was the first ever Hulk movie. Coming right after Spider-Man? The expectations were high. So after people came out of the movie theater, I can see why young kids and parents were like, Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? What is that private pile? So as a fan of the movie as a kid, and still a fan of it today, let me tell you why I think it's a much better film than it gets credit for. It's 2003. A year earlier, Spider-Man came out, and it blew my freaking mind, dude. Life-changing. Epic. Iconic. So when they announced a Hulk movie to come out a year later, let's go! Let's go! Oh, you know I was hyped. I wanted everything with the Hulk logo on it. Hulk toys, Hulk books, Hulk puzzles for God's sake! And even that sweet green Hulk Hershey syrup that probably took a couple years off your life. It didn't matter. I was hyped. It was my new obsession. Even after seeing the movie, I was still amped for the Hulk. I even made a new Hulk story. Called it Hulk 3. Yeah, dude. Didn't even need a Hulk 2. Because this idea was so genius. Want to hear it? No! Okay. Let's read it. So I titled it, Hulk 3, The Hulk Returned. I guess. What happened the second time? No one cares! Because this is the best Hulk story ever. Alright, let's go. Chapter 1. Hulk time. When Bruce was at his brother's birthday, everyone he knew was there. Betty was there, and his friends were there. But then a big thump came, and all the party stuff was knocked down. Then a big foot crashed through the roof and squished mostly everything. And Bruce saw a huge face peek through the hole in the roof. And Bruce got so much anger in him, he turned into the Hulk and he jumped up and saw the Gray Hulk and they fighted and fighted. Just, just trash. Great material. I may want to, I may want to keep this uh, to publish. So here, let's skip a couple chapters to keep it, keep it secret. All right, chapter four. Hulk to the rescue. In the afternoon, Bruce went to a fancy restaurant, and after he ate, 
The waiter gave him his bill, and when he saw how much it cost, he said, What? And the bill said, One billion dollars and 38 cents. <laughs> After that, he went home and went to bed. <laughs> Dude, kids really do say the darnest things. Zip, zop, zoopity, blop. So yeah, I was pretty hyped as a kid, but I'll be honest, as an eight-year-old at the time, a lot of this movie just kind of went right over my head. But even as a kid, the movie was still entertaining enough for me. Not to mention it's set in the... Anyway, even though I liked it as a kid, rewatching it again recently made me appreciate it even more and see what Ang Lee was going for. He wanted to make a drama that looks deeper into trauma and repressed anger, instead of just making Bruce Banner one-dimensional and Hulk just a silly green giant wreaking havoc. It doesn't always succeed, but at least to me, these characters and movie are way more interesting than the 2008 one. Even the CGI looked better in 2003 compared to 2008. I'll talk about that later. As for Mark Ruffalo's take on the Hulk, I like it. He's more of a side character, but his version is interesting and badass, even if he was kind of nerfed in Endgame. But to me, the definitive Hulk movie is still Ang Lee's, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like, uh, what? I don't know, just compared to the other Hulk movies we've gotten, I've just enjoyed this one the most. Really, really, I have. I also think every actor in the movie really, really gave it their all. There's some really good performances, mostly. Watching you. You were gonna die, and I was gonna have to watch you die. Betty. I'm sorry. Really. Hey, I'm not gonna explode, okay? Are you sure about that? Stop! Stop! What? Stop! What? Think of all those men out there in their uniforms, barking and swallowing orders, inflicting their petty rule over the entire globe. Think of all the harm they've done to you, to me, to humanity. I'd rather die. Oh, that's your answer. And indeed, you shall die and be reborn. A hero of the kind that walked the earth long before the pale religions of civilization infected humanity's soul. No! Yeah. Then you have this guy, Josh Lucas. He's really the only one that's a little over the top. But that's obviously the point. I think that's what they were going for. Oh, am I? Give me the M2. So long, big boy. Oops. Come on now. Tell me those scenes aren't cool. <laughs> As for the tone of the movie, well, it's serious, serious as. as the only humor is the tank to the nut scene. Other than that, this movie is drama and seriousness for two and a half hours. And honestly, that's what I like about it. The movie is engaging enough for me that I didn't need any tension breaking or thrown in humor. I seriously doubt Marvel would make a movie like this again. A film about a father experimenting on himself illegally, only to pass his mutations onto his newborn son, and then be so afraid of his creation, he tries to murder the boy, only to murder his wife, but then because he's crazy as fuck, he wants to come back into Bruce's life, only to harvest his DNA, and make himself stronger, because of his ego, and to finish the project he started? You what? And then you have Betty Ross, who is emotionally disconnected with her father, and with Bruce, and as you're watching this movie, you're like, damn dude, 
The themes of this movie are deeper than what you get in your average MCU film. No wonder people were into it. <laughs> Only after having hindsight and seeing what we'd gotten after this movie came out, have I really appreciated the uniqueness of this movie. Again, not everything works, but most of it does. Also, I don't want to leave this out of the video, but the soundtrack to this movie by Danny Elfman is just so epic to me. That Hulk theme has been stuck in my head since June 2003. So good. Now let's talk about the special effects. Still, to this day. To this day! The special effects I think were groundbreaking back in 2003. Even in 2022, for some reason, this 2003 Hulk version looks more realistic than the 2008 and Mark Ruffalo CGI. I mean, am I tripping? Does anyone else agree with me? I can't imagine how much work was put into this movie just on the CG side. Let me know in the comments if you agree with this statement. I mean, I truly think this looks more real than this. But I'll admit, some shots look worse than others. What is that? What is that, Private? Remember, it's 2003 here. A negative I have is the dog scene and the end fight scene. They're so dark, it's hard to see or know what the hell is going on. And I gotta believe that they did that because of the technical limitations they had back in those days. Making the setting at night would hide the fakeness of the CG, but it still makes for some confusing fight scenes. That's really my only negative. Also, the end fight sequence is like way out there. You got a giant whole bubble of emotions? The uh, Giant emotional Hulk bubble? What? At least this part is epic though. Struggle no more and give me all of your power. You think you can live with it? Take it! Take it off! To wrap things up, if you've never seen this movie, or it's been a while, I implore you to check it out again. After all these years of so many superhero movies, it was refreshing to go back to this one and enjoy it even more than I did as a little 8 year old kid. Now don't get me wrong, I enjoy the hell out of the MCU and even the DCEU, but the genre has gotten crowded and sometimes one of them comes along that stands out a little bit more than the rest. Good or bad. And going back in time to one of the very first comic book movies showed me that Ang Lee's Hulk was trying to do its own thing. An experiment. And for that reason, at least to me, it is one of the most underrated comic book movies ever made. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, go ahead and thumbs up the video and click the subscribe button because I got a whole lot of content like this coming soon. See ya!